Welcome to this episode of When Friends Come Over. Uh, I want to talk about today the gift of a surprise. And I know that surprise can mean something to something different to a lot of people. And so if surprise doesn't necessarily mean a good thing to you, then I hope that if you listen or watch this, that you might get a different takeaway from my perspective on it. So I definitely know that sometimes surprises aren't a good thing. So I hope that that doesn't turn you off from listening or watching this. Uh, but I was Googling today what the what the word surprise means. And so the word surprise means to strike with wonder or amazement, especially because it's unexpected. And so I guess today I just want to share a few quick thoughts that I've observed about surprises in my own life and observed from others. And those, I guess, like five little insights, observations, tips uh, that I want to share are the memories that surprises can leave being thoughtful on who you are wanting to surprise, learning to plan and not control surprises. If you know me, that that would be a big one. Uh, number four, how to handle surprises if you're on the receiving end of them, if it's not something that I guess um, that you think that you might handle as well as expected, and I'll explain more about that. And then number five is how to create micro surprises in your everyday lives. Okay. So here goes. By the way, at the end of this, um, I wanted to share some personal surprise videos that I had made uh, that I just think that you might enjoy watching that um, were great memories for me. And yeah, so I'm going to add those videos at the end of this. So if you're listening to it, you might want to watch the surprises. So I hope you enjoy them. So let's dive in. Okay, so the first point I want to dive into is that the memories that they leave with you, the long last memories that, the long lasting memories that surprises can leave with you. And for me, I just want to share a quick one from my childhood. And I don't, I don't necessarily remember a ton of things from my childhood, but one thing, and I think I was like six or seven, and I, I had a dog, and this dog was I, technically my dog, even though you know I'm the youngest of four, but this dog was my dog, and I don't remember lots about Libby, uh, but I remember so clearly the moment that Libby entered my world, and it was from a surprise. And I was a little kid, and I was coming home from a friend's house, and I remember my sister was sitting on my bed, and I think I had finally gotten my own room, and my sister, my elder sister, was sitting on my bed, and all I remember was being so angry that she was sitting on my bed in my room. And then all of a sudden this little puppy came out of, I think it was a helmet. And I think I had been really wanting a puppy or a dog. And so Libby entered my world as a surprise and it has left one of the most beautiful memories for me um, on, on the day that a dog entered my world and it was technically my dog and my dog was named Libby. So it was such a beautiful surprise and so for me, the memories that they can create in your world because of that amazement and wonder that they bring um, just create that core, core memory. And then there's been this other beautiful moment of a surprise that fully has bonded me to some of my best friends in America where, and it's left such a core memory and just something I know that I treasure so dearly and, and I imagine that they do too. But I was able to surprise two of my absolute dearest best friends in America when I was over there on a trip and they thought I was somewhere else in the world. And being able to surprise them and their reaction, which will be in one of the videos, was just the most priceless gift to me and I know it was such a joy to them. And so that has definitely left this beautiful imprint on my soul and on our friendship. So I know the memory that that has created for me. And I'm sure you have examples of, you know, some of your core memories. Maybe they came from a surprise. So I'd be curious to know if that was your own experience with surprise. So that was number one, the memories that they leave. There's other stories I could think of, but those were two that I wanted to just share. Okay, the number two thought that I wanted to share about surprises, and especially when it comes to when friends come over, is that you want to be really thoughtful on on who you're trying to surprise because obviously introverts and extroverts work very differently and should be celebrated for that but you really never want to plan a surprise party for an introvert full of so many people in a room that just wouldn't be intentional or thoughtful to the person on the receiving end which is really what the surprise is about is being thoughtful on who is receiving the surprise and so for me I just want to share again it will be a video at the end but this beautiful moment that I created for my mum who's still technically as my friend so you know when friends come over can include your family and uh, I was able it was her birthday and I know my mum is 
you know, not one for crowds or, you know, big attention on her. But uh, my myself and my two sisters took her out for um, like an afternoon tea. And I had arranged for a video greeting from someone who she had followed for like 30 plus years in this fitness world. And I was able to get a greeting, a personalized greeting from her. And we were able to share it together, just us daughters and my mom. And it was just such a beautiful gift that I was able to give to her, but it was also so intentional about it being for her because she's someone who prefers that close, smaller gathering. And so being thoughtful on who you're trying to surprise, uh, I think really matters. And it's just such a gift. And I just remember that moment. So it was so special, but it was more so special because of the intentionality behind it on not trying to make something that was not bespoke for the receiver. So be intentional on who you're trying to surprise. Okay, number three is planning and not controlling the outcome of a surprise. So I'm quite the planner and I'm also a recovering control addict. So it's still very much in recovery. But there's been a few surprises that definitely didn't go the way that I had planned or the way that I had expected and imagined. And so obviously was managing all of that. But I think when you can, I guess, have the outcome that you want to surprise someone, do something for someone, but try and not <laughs> control every single detail of how that is going to work out. And again, another video at the end of this one was uh, actually two videos at the end of this one were where I was traveling and there was two friends, very different um, situations. One of them was in England and one of them was in Australia and it was at a restaurant. So there was lots of different nuances involved in that. But my intention, the outcome I wanted was just to su surprise them. And both of them worked out, but I know in my head, I got so in my head about all of the details that could have easily have gone wrong, that when there's other people involved in it, I was so getting worked up about it that I didn't fully get to enjoy the process of creating the anticipation because I was too trying to control everything. But it, thankfully, the outcome worked out great. I was able to surprise both of them, but I know there have been times where I've just not managed that as best that I could and I ended up getting disheartened because I was trying to control everything and so sometimes I think it's just focus on the outcome oh for example <laughs> love my dad uh, but I had just gotten out of quarantine but I had tricked my sister and and her daughters that I wasn't going to be home in the country for quite some time and um, so I'd planned with my parents that I actually was in the country I was able to surprise them and so I had asked my dad to film the surprise and he had forgotten <laughs> to film the surprise. But the outcome was my sister got a surprise and that is what mattered. And we both have that memory, so that's what matters most. Um, but you know, obviously I was trying to control every single detail of it and it just doesn't work out sometimes, so that's okay. Number four is how to handle a surprise if maybe it's not something that you're used to. And this actually happened really recently and it happened to me Personally, because I love being the one who plans things and I love surprising people. Uh, but when it happens to you, it can sometimes be a little bit overwhelming. And, and I really was navigating how to, how to handle that. And you maybe have experience with that too. And uh, so it was my birthday. Obviously, a lot of surprises can happen around birthdays, but it was my birthday and uh, I just recently, just this year, turning 35 and uh, was celebrating it in Florida with two of my dear friends um, who came and, you know, invested their time and their money and, um, you know, energy to come spend time with me uh, at Disney World. And we're having such an amazing time. And um, anyway, the, the story of it was I had come back to the hotel and after being at uh, Disney, World all, uh, Disney World all day and the room was completely decorated and, you know, just beautiful notes and um, just just completely surprised me because I'm, I'm the one who loves surprising others. And I was so good in the moment to be really present, but afterwards was fully overwhelmed that these two beautiful humans who had already invested so much time and energy um, and finances to come and spend this time with me that would go beyond, go you know above and beyond and just, you know, decorate the room and they made it so beautiful and it was so thoughtful and it was so intentional for me. But I got, I got really overwhelmed because, you know, I, I'm so independent. I'm so used to doing things for myself that when someone else does something for me, it just, it just really took me back in. And I was able to process 
some really great emotions and and really reflect on it and then share with them how beautifully touched I was with it, but also how it did catch me off guard. And so maybe you've experienced something like that when someone's done something so thoughtful, but maybe you haven't handled it as best in the moment as you can. As you can. And um, I think it's really good to reflect on maybe why that was. And yeah, so sometimes when you are on the receiving end of it, to really try and focus on being present in the moment. And I'm so glad that I was because it was such a beautiful moment, but I definitely know afterwards it took me some time to realize that these beautiful people who had already done so much for me for me to spend time with me went above and beyond and surprised me in that beautiful way. So I was so grateful, but I know that sometimes other people can experience similar things of just being taken back and not necessarily knowing how to handle a surprise in the moment. So I hope that encouraged someone and, and you got something from from that little story. And the number five thing that I wanted to share was about creating micro surprises in your everyday life. Um, I love trying to cultivate a life of little micro, micro moments. Um, my friend and I call them and share them with each other, uh, but micro surprises. And I think if the definition of surprises is to strike with wonder or amazement, especially because it's unexpected, then I think that that's a really easy thing to be able to do. And so maybe this will be a challenge for myself and, and maybe an encouragement for you to try and create some more micro surprises in your life. If you don't think it comes easy to you, I think you can start small. Maybe, you know, maybe a surprise could be complimenting someone that you see regularly at the coffee shop, in the street, and being genuine and thoughtful about it. But that's gonna be something unexpected for people. I can almost guarantee it uh, for sure. It's something that brightens my day. And again, that's what a surprise is, is meant to do is to brighten your day to bring wonder and amazement. Uh, so maybe you can compliment someone. Maybe you can send a text message to someone that will just be really thoughtful because again, I think the best kind of surprise is one that's thoughtful. And I have some of the you know most amazing friends in the world and I know that they would value something small and kind rather than something grand that you that really doesn't doesn't give them the gift of a surprise at all and it will um, not be making them seen or you know feel like that they're valued because it doesn't yeah it's not a gift to them so being thoughtful and intentional and knowing your friend maybe it's buying a coffee for a stranger or just doing those little things that you can find in your everyday and it's smiling at the checkout person there's so many ways I guess it's being kind as well it's it's for sure about being kind, but I think it will also become as a surprise to people because maybe it doesn't happen in there every day. So, okay, those are my five things. I hope that this has been um, a great little nugget for your day. And I always like to hear from you. So please do uh, share with me, um, like, if you feel like it, do those podcast things. Honestly, whether one person watches this or however many people watch it, uh, the intention for me is to be able to express some of my creativity and um, just share some thoughts that have been, I guess, on my mind. And so thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, listen to this, and I hope that you have a lot of beautiful, surprising moments in your, in your week, in your day, um, in your year ahead. So thank you so much, and thanks for being a part of When Friends Come Over. Okay. Meet my friend Leanne. Oh, oh my word. Oh my word. <laughs> God, you worked. Do you mind if I join you for dinner? <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> okay, I'm about to surprise my friend.
Canada. Yeah. <laughs> 